All right, this video is about reflections and dilations, which we've worked on before, but um, in the past we stayed very basic. We just used the, uh, the x-axis and the y-axis as the uh, reflection line. Now we're going to get a little bit more advanced and use other lines. And uh, when it's time for dilations, in the past we stuck to the origin as the center of dilation. Now we're going to be using other points as the center of dilation as well. So we're just getting a little bit more advanced with our reflections and dilations. First of all, understand this. When you see a, a small equation like this, like y equals a number or x equals a number, these are um, horizontal and vertical lines. Now, it's the opposite of what you might think because you know that the y-axis is vertical but the line y equals 1 is actually going to be a horizontal line. Um, it's a horizontal line at 1. So this is the line y equals 1. It's a horizontal line at 1. Similarly, the line x equals negative 1 is a vertical line. It's a vertical line at negative 1. So this is the line x equals negative 1. So when you do your reflection across this line, uh, just be careful to ignore the x-axis now. It's tempting to uh, fall back on the x-axis uh, as a common reflection line, but nope, got to use this new one. So if I want to find the image of point H, uh, I'm going to go the same distance on the other side of the line. So this is one below the line, so I'm going to go one above the line and that'll be my new point H prime. Okay, um, if I'm going to do th my point E, this is one, two, three, four, five, five units below the blue line. Okay, so I'm going to go five units above the blue line. One, two, three, four, five. And that's going to be uh, E prime. Okay, uh, look at point F. This is six units. No, yes, this is six units below the blue line. Again, it's, it's so hard to uh, keep yourself from counting from the x-axis because that's what we're used to. So just be really careful to make sure you're counting. You, I almost made the mistake uh, for a second there. So it's six units from the blue line. So now I need to go six units above the blue line, which is actually going to go a little bit um, off the chart, but that's okay. So this is five units. So six units is going to be about here. And this is F prime. And then the point L, that's one unit below the blue line. So I'm going to go one unit above the blue line. And now I'll just connect those dots. So there is your reflection across the line y equals 1. So let's do the same thing with problem number 2 here. All right, see how the point w is 2 units away from the blue line. So I need to go 2 units to the left of the blue line, and that's going to be the image. Point b, 1, 2, 3, 4 units from the blue line. So I'm going to do four units to the left of the blue line, and that'll be B prime. And then uh, point R is three units to the right so of the blue line, so I'm going to go three units to the left of the blue line. Okay, and now I'll connect the dots. All right, so there's your reflection, uh, B prime, R prime, W prime. Next, we need to reflect across the line y equals 3, and a sketch might be helpful. All right, so y equals 3 is a horizontal line at 3. Let's do a quick sketch. Okay, so there is my y-axis and my x-axis, so let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4,
Okay, I'll put more marks on here if I need to. So um, the line y equals 3 is a horizontal line at 3. Okay, so this is the line y equals 3. Okay, now the point we need to reflect is the point 2 comma negative 5. Okay, so this is 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, okay, so I need to go down one more. Okay, so here is the point 2 comma negative 5. Okay, now I need to reflect this point over this line. Uh, man, I think I'm going to need uh, more space in this. All right, notice how this point is eight spaces below the line y equals three. All right, this is a distance of eight. So if I'm going to do a reflection, I need to go eight spaces above this line. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, um, so this is actually at a height of 11, you know, because this is 3, and then I went up 8 more, so that's a total of 11. And don't forget that um, the x coordinate is 2, so we're not changing that. We're still at an x value of 2. So this is the point 2, comma, 11. All right, so there's your answer. Um, now, for number four, we need to reflect across the line x equals 3, which is a vertical line. And we're reflecting the same point. So maybe I can use the same graph. OK, so this time we are reflecting over the line x equals 3. So that's a vertical line at 3. So this is the line x equals 3. All right, so we have to reflect over this line. Um, OK, so 2 comma negative 5. Let me actually move this. It's in my way. OK, I'll put it over here, 2 comma negative 5. So if I want to find the mirror image of this point, notice how this point is one unit to the left of the line. So that means I need to go one unit to the right of the line. OK, so for that reason, um, this is going to be the point 4 comma negative 5. OK, remember, this is the line x equals 3. So here we are at 3. If I go one space to the right, that's 4. And the y value is still the same. The y value is still negative 5. OK, so that's how you reflect across uh, a line that's not the y-axis or the x-axis. OK, looking at problem number five, we need to do a dilation by a scale factor of uh, 3 over 2. OK, now, for number five, we are using the origin, 0, 0 as the center of dilation. So when the origin is the center of dilation, all you really have to do is use the coordinates. You know what, I'm going to use a smaller pen. So um, think of this as point A for a moment. So point A has the coordinates negative 2, comma, 4. So that's negative 2, comma, 4. So if I want to find out what a prime is, all I really have to do is multiply each of these by 3 over 2. 
So if I do negative 2 times 3 over 2, the 2's cancel out, all right? And that just leaves me with negative 3. The negative sign doesn't go away. Okay, so that means the x-coordinate is going to be negative 3. Um, now, if I do the same thing with the y value, if I do 4 and I multiply times 3 over 2, okay? Remember, this is like having 4 over 1. 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. Um, so that's 12 over 2, which is 6. So a prime is negative 3 comma 6. All right, so that's going to be negative 3 comma 6 will be right here. So this will be a prime. Let's do the same thing for what I'm going to call point B. Okay, if this is point B, then the coordinates of point B are 2 comma 2. So if I want to find out the coordinates of B prime, I need to multiply these by the scale factor. Multiply by 3 over 2. So if I do 2 times 3 over 2, well, okay, look, the 2's are just going to cancel each other out. So that's going to be 3. Okay. Um, oh, and they're both 2, so that's going to just give me 3 comma 3. All right, so the point 3 comma 3 is right here. And that's going to be B prime. So here is the line segment after the dilation. All right, so notice how um, it's parallel, but it's longer. Now, it's very easy when the uh, center of dilation is 0, comma 0. It's a little tougher when the center of dilation is something else. Okay, so um, this time the center of dilation is going to be the point 6, comma, negative 4. So the first thing we need to do is locate that point. So the point 6, comma, negative 4 is right here. This is 6, and here is negative 4. Okay, so this is the point 6, comma, negative 4. This is the center of dilation. All right, look, the scale factor is 1 half, so I'm going to wind up with a line that is smaller. But I cannot simply take half of 6 and half of negative 4. Okay, the, the origin 0, comma 0 is not the center. So here's what I need to do. Okay, um, th again, let's think of this as uh, point A you have to ask yourself how you would get from the center to point A. Okay, so notice to get from the center to point A, I would have to go like this horizontally. Okay, um, what did I just do? So this is six, seven, eight. So that is a motion of negative eight. And then I would have to go up this amount. Um, let's see, that's 4 and another 4. So that is positive 8. So that is the original path that takes you from the center of dilation to point A. But remember, we are supposed to dilate by a scale factor of 1 half. So that means we need to go half of each of these distances. So if I take each of these distances and multiply by the scale factor, if I multiply this by 1 half, that's going to give me negative 4. If I multiply this by 1 half, obviously that's going to give me positive 4. Okay, so we're so that's what I'm going to do. So um, starting from the center, the center of dilation, instead of going left 8 uh, and up 8, I'm going to go left 4 and up 4. 
Okay, so I'm going to go left four, one, two, three, four, and up four. All right, so this will be the new uh, point A prime. This will be the image of point A. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing again for uh, the other endpoint. So I'm just going to erase all this stuff so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, again, to get to point B, I'm going to call this point B, from the center of dilation, I would have to travel like this, and then I would have to travel like this. Okay, so that was left 4, uh, in other words, negative 4, and up, um, what is this? Uh, six and again we are doing a scale factor of one half so if I multiply each of these motions by the scale factor alright half of negative four that's going to be negative two half of positive six is going to be positive three Okay, so instead of going left 4 and up 6, I'm going to go left 2 and up 3. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. So starting from the center of dilation, I'm going to go left 2 and up 3. And that will be the image of point B. So I'm going to call it B prime. Okay, so let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so there's my center and here are my new points. Okay, so all we uh, have to do now is just connect the dots and we're done. See how the new segment is shorter than the original segment? Uh, if you were to measure this, you would see that this is exactly half the size of the original segment. All right, That's your scale factor of one half at work. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.